My name is Jean van Linnaerts. I work for Signify, a lighting company that is now rolling out communication systems that work via light. I'm, all, I'm also a part-time professor at Eindhoven University of Technology and I am the technical lead for a European project called Elliot, where we try to improve the performance of optical wireless communication systems. And I'd like to talk today about some innovations in LED wireless communication systems, where I believe that we can even further improve the performance of these communication systems. But first, I'd like to dive a little bit into history to explain where I believe that communication, and particularly wireless communication, is going to. Is it about just the speed of communication, or is it about the distance that we cover with communications? If I'm going back to 1904, that was the year that Marconi crossed the Atlantic Ocean with Morse code, intercontinental signals. And nowadays, I have to explain to my students that all we achieve is just communication over a few meters. But it's no longer covering the distance. We communicate at hundreds of megabits per second, even gigabits per second, or more, many gigabits per second. But is it just about the speed of communication? Or is it about the number of people who can enjoy wireless communication? The largest break breakthrough in, optical in wireless communication in the 80s was the advent of cellular systems. The idea was that a very dense reuse of the radio frequencies was really helping us to improve the number of customers, the number of subscribers that could use a mobile phone system. And we have seen that the cell size is shrinking and shrinking. And with Wi-Fi now, we even just cover a couple of rooms or one floor in an office building. And the communication is further shrinking. 5G is trying to address many more users in the same area, or is even trying to build the Internet of Things, where we have 50 billion devices on the planet. So there, I believe it's more about bits per second per square meter or the density of the system that is really counting and where optical communication can make a difference. So I have been asked that why in the 90s there was a battle between optical communications and radio communications and evidently Wi-Fi won that battle. The IRDA systems of those time didn't really get a lot of traction. But I believe that the disadvantage at that time is now a big advantage. In 1993, we discovered, we knew already, that light does not go through the wall. And if you need to roll out a communication system, you want to reach as many customers in a way that is as cheap as possible in the beginning. So coverage and covering distances and with, uh, having signals that cover an entire building, you have an advantage. And light at that moment had a big disadvantage. Light did not go through the wall. But it was a disadvantage in 1993. And to quote a famous Dutch soccer player, Johan Cruijff, every disadvantage has an advantage. And the fact that light does not go through the wall may very well be the main advantage why it is becoming popular nowadays. If signals do not go through the wall, you don't get interference from your neighbors, so you have the entire spectrum for yourself to communicate at very high bit rates, but particularly also with having to wait for the traffic from all the others to finish before you get the right to access the channel. Higher quality of service, lower latency, and also an added security. To go a bit further into the aspect of security, Let's consider Industry 4.0, a factory hall with many autonomous robots connected wirelessly and moving around freely. Now, if the connection fails, then the whole factory needs to come to an emergency stop. And that can be very costly because it may take 24 hours, or in some cases, as I heard, even 48 hours to get the factory up and running again. So it's easy to sabotage such a factory. It's easy that accidentally such a things may happen, but also the protection against a kind of intentional denial of service attack may be very worthwhile to consider. And optical communication can help here. 
Wi-Fi is great, Wi-Fi is improving, but still the average public complains quite a bit about wireless communication via radio. I did a test in a student city, not Eindhoven this time, but Nijmegen, where I was checking out why my Wi-Fi connection was poor. And I found out that at some instances I had to wait for 10 seconds to get my next data over the channel. And this is anecdotal, I've not figured out whether it was really the Wi-Fi or whether also other effects could be there. But these are the things that you don't like in a factory setting. That a drone flying through the factory suddenly misses connection for 10 seconds. More scientifically, I found this paper, also quite recent, from measurements of what is the performance that people really get when they're using Wi-Fi. And of course, some people get the advertised speeds. In an interference-free environment, you get the full speed that is advertised on the box. But in this uh, cumulative density distribution, we also see that quite a large number of people, 10%, uh, this uh, 0 0.1 point on the vertical axis, the performance is not even a tenth of the bitrate that is promised. That is really a very poor connection at, these, uh, at, at this fraction of the users. And 10% of the Wi-Fi users, well, 4 billion Wi-Fi chips being shipped every year. So I'm talking about 400 million people who are potentially complaining about their Wi-Fi connection. So what we are promised is on the top right, high-speed connectivity. What we actually get is congestion. So it's more or less like, do we need to improve Wi-Fi? Yes, I need a Ferrari to go faster through the to London city center. But my real problem is the congestion of traffic and not the speed of the car. So this over-provisioning, which is the usual approach in the computer world, may not be the solution to get latency-free, very reliable traffic and connectivity. But as I'm pitching the reliability and the quality of service for optical wireless communication, of course we have to solve another problem. And I'm quite often hearing the complaint, if I block the line of sight, my optical communication is completely gone. But then on the other hand, my response usually is, I'm working for a lighting company, Signify, previously Philips Lighting. More than a century of experience and how to give a nice shadow-free illumination. So if I hold my hand above this table, I don't see a very harsh shadow because the light is coming from multiple angles, from multiple directions. And therefore, it's hard to block the full line of sight from, from all the light because it's always coming from another direction. And uh, for instance, a solution, this type of solution is also worked out in a Signify system where one modem, one central signal processing unit is disseminating, is distributing its signals to six optical front ends, to six optical antennas in the ceiling. And the coverage area is built up from the collection of all these footprints and in some areas indeed you may get the signals from more than one light source. So that improves the performance. But is it the ideal solution? Can we do even better? If, we, if I'm right in the middle between two light sources, the path length to the light sources may be the same. And if I use the same cable length then I'm really strengthening the signal. If I would like to have the freedom to use different cable lengths, then I may have the effect that the traveling time of the light via one path is longer than via another path. And that gives these notches in the frequency spectrum. And of course, we use orthogonal frequency division multiplexing as a modulation method, OFDM. And on these frequencies that are lost in multipath, there is no data because it is not loaded with data. The system knows about this and the system anticipates on this. But if I were to use, if I were to use multiple input, multiple output MIMO systems with spatial multiplexing, I can do better. In fact, I can transmit different signals from different points in the ceiling. So I split up my data streams into three parts, like in this picture, and I have a detector that can separate light coming from three different angles. Then I can, in theory, make three parallel channels. However, there's crosstalk between the light, 
the light from one lamp falls on more than one detector. So I will have crosstalk. But the mathematicians tell me, if that is just a crosstalk matrix, we can invert that matrix and still give you virtually three parallel channels. And that's the idea of improving the performance in such a MIMO system. Now, we can do that to enhance throughput, but we can also do it to improve the reliability. First of all, what do you need to do there? We need to have the light emissions from different points in the ceiling to a small device on the table, my cell phone, my laptop, that looks into different angles and can separate, to some extent at least, the signals coming from these different angles. So I need a kind of infrastructure in the ceiling and then uh, communicate very reliably. I have seen some attempts to put these multiple emitters very close together and then just use it as a boost to the bitrate. Have multiple detectors all looking approximately in the same direction, looking into multiple emitters that also are approximately located in the same location. I don't think that will ever work very well because the metrics, the crosstalk metrics, will be very ill-conditioned. So the gains that you get are more of boosting the signal rather than of so making separate, separable communication streams. That's also what we see on this curve here. If there is more and more crosstalk between these streams, then at some point in time the throughput does no longer increase, but does decrease because it's basically adding up to the signal strength rather than giving me these parallel channels. The curve on the right was, in essence, created by my PhD student Thiago Kuna for wavelength division multiplexing, for sending signals in red, green and blue, and then have relatively cheap filters to separate these signals. In fact, in illumination, we need a very flat spectrum to make sure that we as humans can perceive colors very well. So the RGB LEDs will not have a very sharp laser spectrum, but will have largely overlapping spectra in order for us to perceive the light as being pleasant. But in the Elliott project, we are using wavelength division multiplexing in a smart way. We use wavelength division multiplexing on a plastic optical fiber to make sure that the different MIMO signals are disseminated from some point in the backbone to the ceiling units. So there's one fiber going to all of these ceiling units in a daisy chain manner. And each of these ceiling units picks one color and re-emits that in free space in the infrared to a user client device. And then we have crosstalk on the wireless channel anyhow, because these signals coming in from multiple directions overlap partially. And we also have crosstalk on the plastic optical fiber because we can just use cheap LEDs there. But what the signal processing system sees is basically a concatenation of two crosstalk metrics. First on the fiber in the color domain, then in the wireless domain in the infrared part, where it is a kind of spatial crosstalk. Mathematically, that's just one matrix, and that one matrix can be inverted. So the MIMO signal processing works end to end and you get the color separation for free on the optical fiber. And with all this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, I'd like to draw some final conclusions. First of all, for me, it's a very nice topic of research to dive into Li-Fi. We can reuse a lot of knowledge from the existing communication systems, but it is different. And since it is different, we also have nice opportunities to make new innovations to improve the communication systems. But there's also a good reason to put Li-Fi in the market. We can go to unprecedented densities of users, have a number of bits per second per square meter that may potentially be higher than what we can achieve with radio communication systems. That gives high quality of service because optical communication does not have all that interference that can come from anywhere in a radio system and therefore I don't have to wait for other users on the channel. And that gives low latency. Very good for gaming, very good for virtual reality, and also very suitable in an industry setting with autonomous devices. But 
as I argued, then we must also have a mechanism to protect ourselves against blockage of the line of sight. And MIMO processing, I believe, can do that. And having massive MIMO in a lighting setting with just a few optical fibers in the ceiling is very well possible.